Uh, hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Uh, today I've got a very special uh, video for you. Uh, last night I was working with a student on this specific problem. It was a nice Gauss's Law problem and I thought I'd make a video just to highlight the solution because I think many people would benefit uh, from seeing how to solve this type of problem. So here it is. Uh, we've got a spherical shell. Um, the shell is non-conducting and it has a surface charge density that I'm denoting by that letter sigma over here. Uh, that Charge density is uniformly distributed uh, on the surface of the shell. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna poke a small tiny hole on that shell. So therefore there is no charge in that tiny hole. And here I have it uh, shown in the figure right here. Now the radius of that tiny hole, I'm gonna write it as little r. And I'm gonna assume that the radius of that hole is much, much smaller than the radius of the shell. So the question that we have is, how do you calculate the electric field just above that hole position? And more specifically, how are we going to apply Gauss's law in order to solve this problem? All right, so um, I solved a similar problem to this uh, many, many years ago, and there's a video, and I'll put the link in the description. Uh, but it was basically, again, some spherically symmetric charge distribution, but it had a large cavity in it. Okay, and I'm gonna use a similar technique that I used for that video in order to solve this one. All right, so uh, here's the setup for the problem. Uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use Gauss's law, but how do you use Gauss's law in this case where you don't have kind of nice spherical symmetry? So in order to do this problem, we're also going to have to use a superposition. So I'm gonna show you how to set this problem up and get to that solution. All right, like with all my videos, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to Physics Ninja. It's the best way to support what I do. All right, let's get started. All right, so how are we gonna approach this problem here? Well, one thing to consider here is since we have a sphere with a little piece missing over here, we lack some symmetry, right? It's not spherically symmetric anymore because of the position of that hole. So one important aspect about this is that we cannot just apply Gauss's law as is because we have this lack of symmetry and there'd be no way to simplify Gauss's law in order to find that electric field um, from that Gauss's law integral, right? Remember what Gauss's law says that E uh, dot DA evaluated over some enclosed surface uh, equals to whatever charge is enclosed by my Gaussian surface divided by epsilon zero. It would be impossible to define this. What would the Gaussian surface look like that would allow E to pop outside of this integral to allow us to calculate that electric field? All right, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm gonna start with my spherical shell with the hole and I wanna represent this object now as being the sum of two objects that are going to be simpler to deal with. Here's what I mean by that. So I replace that <laughs> uh, spherical shell with a hole in it and I'm gonna place it with a spherical shell with no hole. Uh, but now I want it to have a hole in it, so what do I have to do? I have to add a small little bit of area here that I'm denoting here by this green little patch, okay? And for the charge distributions to be equal to what my starting object was, that little area here, or that little hole area, has to have a charge distribution negative sigma. That way when I add both of those charge distributions, I am going to get the object that I started with. So this is what it looks like. You have a shell with a hole, and I'm saying that is going to be equal to a shell with a uniform surface charge distribution sigma. And to it, I'm going to add just a small little surface. But that little surface now has to have its own charge distribution, which I'm writing as negative sigma. So when I add the positive that is actually located right here to the negative, little patch here, I'm going to get cancellation and get an, a little patch of area with no charge at the center. So that, this is really the key to this problem. Now the advantage of doing it like this is now I could use Gauss's law for each of these problems. I'm certainly able to use Gauss's law with spherical symmetry to find the electric field at the surface of this uh, spherical shell. And I can also use Gauss's law if I'm interested in the field very close, say just above this tiny surface. So that I am able to use Gauss's law with. And then when I sum both of these fields using superposition, I am going to get the total field at the position that I'm looking for. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the spherical shell, the middle right here. My goal is to apply Gauss's law. 
e dot da uh, equals to q enclosed divided by epsilon zero. All right, so you have to place a Gaussian surface. And again, I'm interested in the point that is just above the center of the hole. So I'm gonna place a Gaussian surface here that encloses, it's really just above the surface right here. And it encloses all of the charge in that spherical shell. Now, by exploiting the symmetry of this object, we know that the left-hand side of Gauss's law is simply the electric field, which is gonna be uniform uh, multiplied by the area of that sphere, which is 4 pi r squared. Now, how much charge is enclosed? Well, it's that charge density multiplied by the exact same area, the 4 pi r squared. That's the area of that shell, divided by epsilon 0. That's it. So now you can see the 4 pi r squared terms cancel out since they're on both sides. And what you have here, at least, is the magnitude of that field equals to sigma divided by epsilon 0. If I wanted to write this as a vector, this here should be pointing radially outside of that sphere. So again, if I'm just above where that little patch was, this here would be the unit vector that points away from the center of that sphere. All right, so we have this first contribution completed. Okay, the next thing I have to consider now is that uh, little patch. What we're going to do here is I'm going to zoom in on it over here. So here's that patch. It has a radius r something like this, and it's charge distribution. Again, it's negatively charged, so it's minus sigma. What you do here is you're basically just treating this as a 2D charge distribution, okay? We know that since it's negatively charged, the electric field here should simply point toward it. And if I'm close to it, the field is simply going to be perpendicular to that surface. So this is roughly what the electric field vector looks like. Uh, what you do in this case is we define a Gaussian surface that looks like a small little can here. It has two surfaces. I'm just going to denote each surface here by being uh, A. Uh, the normal to that surface is a vector that is perpendicular to the surface like this. Now, if you wanted to apply Gauss's law, you do the same thing as you do for any 2D charge distribution. All right, so you're going to have two contributions to the left-hand side of this integral. You have minus EA for the top, and you have minus EA for the bottom. There is no contribution from the sides because um, the vector that is describing our area is perpendicular to the electric field. Therefore, it doesn't contribute anything. Right? If we're contributing uh, all the terms for the flux, we only have to deal with the top and bottom surfaces. The negative sign here happens because our area vector is pointing outside of that volume, and our electric field is pointing in the opposite direction of that. So you get a negative sign for those flux terms. All right, now we have to consider how much charge is enclosed now in this small can. Again, we have a negative charge distribution, and our area is A, and now you divide again by epsilon zero for Gauss's law. You'll notice that all of the negative signs cancel out here, the areas also cancel out, so let me kind of fix all of this. Now you still have 2 times the electric field on this side, and that equals to sigma over epsilon 0. So that means that my electric field at the end, just bring the 2 down here at the bottom, and that is the magnitude of the electric field produced by this small negative charge. Now we have to note that the direction here is pointing toward that charge distribution. So if I wanted to write this as a vector, I have to do something like this. And again, that patch is going to be located here at some position, right, uh, on the surface of that, conduct, uh, of that spherical shell. So the way that I would denote this now is I would have to put a negative because it is pointing radially inward. Okay, so to capture the direction here, I really have to write it as something like this. Okay, so what do we have now? We have basically two things that produce a field. And what I'm interested in here is what is the total electric field as a vector? Well, all we have to do now is add the contribution from the spherical shell, which is sigma over epsilon zero in the radial direction pointing out. And we have a contribution that's pointing toward the center. And look at it, it's sigma over two epsilon zero. And again, that's in that negative 
uh, our hat direction. So at the end, my total electric field, just above the position of that hole for this spherical shell with a hole in it, ends up being this, sigma over two epsilon zero, and that is pointing radially outward. Isn't that a nice problem? I just thought this is just a great application of Gauss's law, but it has this additional twist in it that we must first kind of split the object of into uh, two geometries that uh, it's easier to apply Gauss's law for. All right, folks, that's it for me. Anyway, hopefully you've learned something in this video. Uh, we'll see you next time.